Hey developers, today we're gonna to talk about positivity and mindset in the software development industry. We're also gonna take a look at some other opinions from some other YouTubers that I follow and also some negative comments, some negative negativity I've seen online lately and I just wanna to talk to you guys about that. Now this is not... Now this is not a normal video for me. I actually do a lot more screencasts and tutorials. If you guys like those type of videos, uh, don't worry, they're coming soon. Actually, I was gonna do one tonight, but I thought maybe I'd try this out. If you guys like these type of videos, leave a comment below and just tell me a little bit about what you guys thought about the video and what you guys think about negativity um, as a software developer in general. I'd love to hear it, so make sure you leave a comment. All right, so. Uh, what kind of brought this on is there's been a few videos coming around that I want to talk about. One is uh, Traversing Media. Brad created one recently about negative mindsets are counterproductive. And essentially what he was trying to say, and I'll generalize what he was trying to say, I'll try to summarize it, I should say, was that uh, there's a lot in the software development industry, there's a lot of people who put other frameworks down, other developers down because maybe they like PHP and PHP isn't the cool new thing out anymore. Or maybe they're a an Ember developer and Ember.js is no longer uh, the most popular framework anymore. It's only about React. And the point he was trying to make, and I think that it's pretty clear, is that this type of negativity doesn't do anything, uh, anyone any good and it actually discourages new developers from jumping in. I know when I was first learning programming and development, especially web development, I jumped into PHP, I was doing WordPress. And then I found out there's this huge backlash against WordPress developers because people thought that WordPress was like beneath them, like it's too easy of a, PHP is not used anymore and it's not a great programming language, so you shouldn't get into WordPress or WordPress is uh, too easy or, or it's too saturated. Um, you know, all the cool kids are going and doing React websites. And obviously that is completely not true at all. The you know, there's the, the industry is pretty healthy. You know, as for me, you know, I don't see a ton of negativity in my day-to-day -day job. You know, I, I work in a great team. We're really positive. We're trying to move forward. I mean, of course, sometimes there's disagreements and things like that, but we try to move forward. We write, we try to write really quality code. We try to do all the best practices and that's what I come from and that's what I see every day. Now, when I talk to um, new developers or I kind of look out some my outside my bubble of my job you know I this is where I see a lot more than activity especially online so uh, I, I want to show you a few things I just noticed recently so if you haven't seen traversing medias make sure I'll put a link in the description below you guys can check out the channel you know he has amazing tutorials on every single subject you've ever wanted to know with web development they're really uh, thought-provoking they're really well done so I, I highly recommend checking them out so, uh, but recently uh, there has been these uh, CS career questions is a subreddit on Reddit and there's this uh, developer called Joshua Fluke. Now he has a YouTube channel. If you haven't heard about him, he does a lot of advice type videos. A lot of um, his advice is rooted in, in his years of working in the software industry. Uh, maybe he's a little bit more junior, um, although he has a computer science degree. He's worked um, a few years. I don't know how many exactly. But I feel like he, he understands how the world works. Like he understands how the software developer world works. He understands how, what, what, what problems that junior developers face. And he's really honest about it. You know, that's not something I get too much into. I definitely, in my channel, I try to teach you uh, some of those skills. But a lot of mine is like, how do you take this framework and do what you want to do with it? But he is, his is like, here, you're a new developer. You're going to get your new first new job. This is what you need to look out for when you get your when you get your first job. So his channel is is done really well recently. He's gotten millions of views, and he's gotten all this hate on like Reddit and and CS career questions. So someone created this this thread and listed like ten different things they hated about Josh. I mean, he's a YouTuber that's trying to get people. Uh, jobs in the software development industry. He's promoting boot camps. He's giving free advice. You don't have to pay him anything. Of course, he does have ways he makes money, but you don't have to pay him anything for this advice. And people are just tearing him down because they don't like what he's saying. 
And I, I just think like this sort of negativity doesn't help anybody. It just, it just, it just, it's a way for everybody to complain and to bring up grievances, which honestly aren't true. I mean, actually he made a whole response video going like basically point by point saying how a lot of these things were misconstrued, that they're using like straw man arguments, um, no true Scotsman's arguments. These are like logical fallacies um, trying to bring his channel down. And, you know, there's this this word that I keep hearing when people criticize uh, us people on YouTube or, or Instagram. We're called YouTube influencers or, or influencers, and it's sort of a, a negative connotation. I don't even want to be considered an influencer. I just have a small YouTube channel, and I'm just trying to do my best. But people throw that term around like, like oh, he's just an influencer. Like, we're trying to scam people out of money and... And that all it, all it is about the money and and really and I think Josh Joshua would agree with this. We're trying to help people. That's that's what we were trying to do. And it's not for everyone. Definitely, there's going to be a segment of people that that just hate these YouTube videos, and that's fine. But for the people that are interested, we want to show you. Like for me, I want to. I I love for people to watch my channel and become a view expert, a view developer, get their first view job. I want them to learn how to do DevOps and CI/CD. I wanted them. I want to teach them different JavaScript frameworks, and so they know how to do a better job at their job, and they can learn it, and they can get that high-paying job. That's what I do this for. I don't do it for the money. I don't do it. I mean, I do make some money, but it's not nearly as much as I make in my full-time job. But really, I want to give value to the people that watch this, and that's what's important to me. And I feel like if I give enough value, and if Joshua gives enough value, then will be paid back in return by you know either comments likes money sometimes and that's kind of the payment we're getting back for it but people kind of but some people don't like that and they think that an influencer is just trying to scam everyone so they make these huge reddit threads on you know how terrible this person is um i just i just don't think this is like you can disagree with this you can leave a comment below and disagree with this and 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 certainly if someone is like a huckster online and you could tell they're just a quick make a buck online type of person and and they're trying to sell you their $150 uh, make money online course, then fine. Yeah, you can call them out. But people who are just creating hundreds of videos, you know, really great in-depth videos teaching you how to do interviews, I think that's, that's a positive thing. Uh, of course, you know, sometimes we complain, but we try to stay positive. And I think that's the point of what of what we do here and what you should take away from this video i was going to go through some of these comments i don't know if they're worth doing um some of them at the beginning actually defended josh and then some people at the end were just just kind of going off on tangents um like selling courses like this guy this was a funny course uh, comment i want to want to see selling courses which i find pretty unethical but stupidly profitable in most cases and then someone's like why do you think selling courses is is wrong? Like what with wait, hold on. Now is selling courses unethical? I mean beside the obvious cash grab stuff. The key there for me is in most cases because most people selling courses are not really providing a good value for what they charge. They sell what they have usually in shady ways saying it has something has something that nothing else has to offer when they very well know most of it can be found free on the internet. This is not true at all the time, but it's prevalent enough that it has, in a way, tarnished the entire business model for me. I was big into e-commerce for a little bit and ran into my own store, was on forums, watched the tutorials. A lot of guys who themselves push this kind of stuff and the majority of the said course sales industry is hella sketchy. A later statement that I haven't seen enough of the content to judge whether regarding Josh from himself. So let me kind of respond to this kind of little bit of negativity here about course sales and how it's in most cases it's not providing good value for what they charge anything in life pretty much at this point you want to learn how to i don't know fix your car you want to um you want to learn some sort of skill you want to become a mechanic you want to become a developer you can find all this material for free online heck if you watch my channel you don't even i i created a book called Vue.js in action um, it sold thousands of copies. I'm really proud of it. It's still selling pretty well today. And uh, if you take that book, you can find every bit of piece of that book online. You can look at the official documentation from Vue.js. 
You can look at uh, different blog articles. You can read the official documentation for Vutify. I even touch on um, testing. And you can look at the documentation for all these different testing. You can look at other YouTube videos. You could watch this channel. I've done over 300 videos and you know I've done over probably 100 different view development videos. You could watch all that and know everything that you would ever want to know on Vue.js and never buy the book. But the point of the book is not to expose some secret view knowledge that no one knows about and that you can only find in the book. It's to take all those resources from the official documentation, from different, you know, my own personal experience of working with Vue and the different libraries that you can use with it and the stuff that, that you might see on in tutorials and different uh, different videos that I do and it puts it all into in different blog articles that are talking about different places. It takes all that information and distills it into one 300 page book where you can find in one place you can quickly reference and you can get the data and information out of quickly or you can read it from cover to cover and, and have a pretty good primary a uh, primer on Vue.js. So that doesn't negate the value because you can find it free online. You can find anything free online. I also sell a course called Create Awesome Vue.js Apps in Nux.js where I teach you the first half is like four hours of basic Vue.js content and then three hours of creating a Nuxt app from scratch using everything um, that the Nuxt library offers and I actually just updated that. And I sell it sometimes between 59, sometimes 39, sometimes 89. And that same thing, you can find everything in that course yourself if you looked at the next documentation, if you go and, and Google a bunch of different blog articles and see how different real world applications are created. But I created and put it all in one place and now I'm selling it to you to buy. And you don't have to buy it. So there's nothing sketchy about that. It's I'm providing value. You may not consider it. You may not want it. If you don't, you don't buy it. But the people who want to learn Nuxt, they want to create it. They want to watch a quick eight hour course and find tons of information concentrated in one place where they can actually practice it and tests and, and, and uh, learn the concepts for me talking to you one on one. They have that option to buy it and get it. So the kind of this idea, like in most cases that courses are sketchy, I think is completely kind of wrong. And, and I think this person doesn't sell courses. I see that the, the there's one industry that make online make money online industry that is blown up that has really put a bad spin on courses. So there's a lot of hucksters, there's a lot of uh, sham artists out there that are selling for $997 a course you can use to learn the latest in Facebook ads or how to create your own online business. They've actually gotten more sophisticated. It used to be like, um, it used to be the courses used to be called like how to make money online. Um, but now that's pretty has a pretty bad negative connotation. So they've spun out to these smaller courses, which are essentially the same thing as make money online, but they're more like, let's teach you how to create Instagram posts for your business. Or let's see, let me show you how to do this skill, which is really the same thing as just making money online. Um, but those courses are so prevalent. People see them everywhere that now people think that, oh, you know, anybody that's selling a course online is is just a huckster and, and just trying to, sh to steal your money. And that's absolutely not true. I just wanted to, to comment on that one comment because I, I think it's just kind of funny. All right, well, I'm not gonna keep going through all these different comments. You can watch, I'll put a link to Joshua's response to it. I, he actually had two negative, opinion, uh, two negative Reddit CS career questions uh, threads here you can look through. So that's all I got to say on this. I think this video is getting a little long. If you like me kind of ranting in front of the camera here and talking, like I said, once again, just leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the negativity on YouTube. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate it. Also, I'm going to give a plug because Udemy is having a, a course sale. It, there's only two days left. It ends, I think, like midnight on Wednesday. Uh, under the link in the description, I have some of my favorite courses and my buddy, uh, Dylan Israel, just created his uh, like third or fourth course course on 100 front end interview questions. It's like a super amazing course. You can get it for 10 bucks right now. I think he normally sells it for like 30 or 40 bucks. I, I would highly recommend you check it out. And you know, if you do pay, use uh, any of the links in the description below, I get a few bucks. And of course, he makes the majority of the money. 
but it also helps out the channel and I can do videos like this. Thanks. Take care.